So I'm Asaf Meseka. I'm a principal engineer at uh, Stream Native. And I started working in Stream Native uh, in May 2022, just a year and a half ago. And after I took like, I think, three weeks to get onboarded, you need know, get on the knowledge I know I need to know. And okay, let's start. Let's start working. And I asked Mateo, which is the CTO. You can see him in the crowd right now. I said, say, Mateo, what do you recommend like as a first task to get onboarded? You know, something small. So you said, yeah, you know, you can, uh, how about starting by adding support for 1 million topics in Pulsar Broker Metrics? And after he described uh, the problem a bit more, I was like, oh, that's like a mega saga. But yeah, we I can start with that. And that basically how I started with this huge um, feature of revamping Pulsar Metrics. So we can really enjoy um, the high cardinality of the topics in Pulsar. But before we start, quick recap. The Pulsar broker itself exposes metrics on an HTTP endpoint called slash metrics. And usually it would configure Prometheus, which is a time series database, to scrape the metrics, let's say every 30 minutes, every 30 seconds. And then you would use Grafana to query, to query that data. Usually the metrics have, looks like that, like a name and a value over time. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, so what's, what's the problem in, in metrics today? So that's what I want to show you in this lecture. I basically want to show you what are the problems with metrics from the user point of view, like the user experience, and then the developer point of view, the developer experience. And once you get, understand the problem, we can talk about the proposal, uh, which is, which is a, an approved PIP. How to solve and to solve everything. <clears throat> Let's start with the current state from the user perspective. Let's review some of the problems. Let's say you want to um, enjoy Pulsar. Now, the biggest thing about Pulsar is you can have um, a really huge amount of topics, up to 1 million in a cluster. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to have, let's say, 10,000 topics in, in a single broker. Now, if you look closely, every topic has 100, roughly 100 unique time series. That means every broker would emit 1 million unique time series. Now, for those who don't know, that's a, a, a really large amount. And like a normal, so and every software you would look at has a couple of thousands. Now, what happens if you utilize Pulsar to the extreme and you have 100,000 topics per broker? You would get 10 million unique time series. Now, that's, that's unusable because first, it's expensive. You need to store it somewhere. Single Prometheus would never cut it. Um, very expensive. And it's so much data, your queries would time out. So what do you do? What do the communities doing? First, they switch from topic granularity to namespace granularity. That reduces the granularity by a lot. But you lose the, you lose the precision, right? The fine-grained ability to know what's happening per topic. Another way is you keep the topic granularity, but you toggle off the producer and consumer metrics. That's also a way to reduce the granularity. Last result, if you must have the topic level, you some write scripts that basically harvest the topic stats using the Pulsar admin API and aggregate and do whatever they need. So the problem we are introducing here is that there's no fine grain control like per topic, I want only that topic. No, it's all or nothing approach. That's the first problem. Second problem, <coughs> It's hard, I would say, very hard to visualize Pulsar histograms. Why? So the bucket range is not encoded as an LE attribute, which is the Prometheus standard. And 
the value resets every one minute for all the buckets. So instead, so today you have something like that, like pulsar storage, right latency, LE05. It should have been LE equals 0.5. So the graph looks like that, that that's a storage right latency. The y-axis shouldn't be messages per second. It's right latency. It, it should actually be something like that. Show me the P95 and it's in millisecond. Okay, but it's simply impossible. Because Prometheus is expected to be in a certain way. So you can't visualize it as you should have. Third problem is about rate and summary. You can lose monitoring data. Now, why? Rate and summary by design are reset every interval. If your scraper is down, let's say for 10 minutes, you have no idea what happened to those metrics. If you would have used cumulative counters and histograms that are basically um, a list of cumulative counters, you wouldn't have that problem. So you wouldn't lose monitoring data. Fourth problem is that summary, which is also a type of metric, it gives you like the P95 or the P50, the P50 of the previous minute. You can't aggregate that metric across brokers. So you can't really know like the, the latency for something, like the right latency for something um, across the board. It's impossible because you would have numerical errors. <clears throat> Another problem is about metrics that you would write for yourself in a POSA function. Let's say you have your own metric Let's assume it's called messages written, okay? So if you want to have that inside the POSAR function, you would do record metric and the message written, and it would actually show up as a summary. And that's the name, like POSAR function user metric, and, and the name you've given is, is inside the label. Um, so because it's a summary, you would get quantized on the values you recorded, sum, and count, and you wanted something different. It also, it resets every minute. So what if you wanted a counter or a gauge or histogram? So basically you can't. So if you summarize it, like you can't really monitor 100,000 topics per book or, or even 10,000, very hard to visualize. Right, and summary, you can see all the problems, and there are more. I just give you like the small amount. Um, so it's a really big problem. Now we move to from how it looks like from the developer point of view, the, the people that write Pulsar. So, first problem you have multiple ways to define and record a metric. <coughs> One way is Prometheus Client Library. It gives you a um, gauge, give you histogram, counter. That's one way. Another way that Pulsar on its own has like a homebrew metrics library. And it has its own histogram called stats bucket. It has rate. It has uh, its own summary implementation. Also, because we uh, in Pulsar, Pulsar uses Bookkeeper, Bookkeeper itself comes with a metrics library that has its own flavor for counter and gauge, and also has another type for the operation summary. And on top of that, it's not only the, the clients of the Bookkeeper, but also some metrics are using Bookkeeper metrics library. Last, you have native Java SDK. Use, using atomic long and log either as counters or using like a primitive long with an atomic updater as a gauge. So just imagine a developer needs to define um, um, a metric and record it. It's so confusing. Next, um, it's very error prone and hard uh, to integrate into the Prometheus export, like to get the metrics out. 
let's say you wrote a new feature, uh, you wrote a new service in Pulsar called Pulsar, my new feature service, okay? So if you want, if you have metrics there and you want to integrate them, so it will be exported, you know, in the slash metrics, you would have to write a method called write metrics and it would get a simple text output stream. And inside, and inside there, you have to write code that basically writes the metrics in Prometheus format into that stream. And then you have to add a call to it from something called the Prometheus metrics generator. Just imagine the problems. There are so much work the developer has to do to just define metrics. It's very error prone. Well, like, what if I forgot to add it? And because everybody writes their own, there's no ability to have like a cross-cutting concerns, right? Like shared labels across the board, uh, print partition topics in a certain way. So you can see how easy it is to make mistakes. Third problem is the manual resets to metrics. So if you're using summary or stats bucket or rate, you have to create a, a method called reset and it, it inside it has to call the reset method on, on the summary stats bucket and rates that you're using. And you have to schedule a call to that reset like every one minute or, or find one and plug it in. Last problem, there is no actually a pluggable way of adding another export format. Um, so if you want, let's say, you want not just Prometheus, you want to export it uh, maybe as OTLP to push it out. Uh, it's a very effective format by, let's say, open telemetry. You can't because, right, as it is as it is written now, it's only Prometheus. And why is that? Because the basic interface across the board is something called the simple text output stream, which basically means you have to write UTF bytes in Prometheus format. So it's impossible to plug in another export format. Okay, so we covered all the problems from the user experience and, and the developer experience, right? So we know how problematic using metrics in both are, especially, of course, with a lot of fun, a lot of uh, topics. So now, now let's talk about the proposal, which is a PIP that has been approved. Um, how do we intend to solve that? <coughs> The first solution is something we call like a topic metric group. You're basically adding a new aggregation level. So today you have like topic and namespace, right? That's the aggregation level, so to speak, and it's either. So now we're going to introduce a new, a new aggregation level, and we're going to introduce a new uh, um, term, which is called a topic metric group. Essentially, it's a group of topics. And then we're going to have a new um, configuration that you will configure that will allow you to define that mapping, like a topic for which group does it belong to. Once you have that, you have the groups, right? You decide the cardinality because now we, you would see the metrics in that level of aggregation. So you can have 10 groups or you can have 10K groups. You control it, but you are the one reducing the cardinality. So if you, if you have 1 million topics, you can now have 1,000 groups. So you could reduce the, the cardinality issue by a lot. So, so just to understand, if before you had something like Pulsar in messages total and you have the topic in the namespace, right? That's a topic level uh, metric. So after you would have all three. You would have the namespace one, the group one, and the topic one, like all three aggregation levels, all exported, emitted. Okay, so that's one thing, right? We are, we are reducing the granulati by introducing a new aggregation level, the groups. The thing is, uh, oh, and in order to define those groups, uh, we're going to have a dynamic configuration. So you can define the group using rules like 
You can say, for example, the group name is BI data. So everything that has the namespace BI and S and the topic starts with BI, that would be associated with that group, BI data, for example. And that's going to be dynamic. Dynamic configuration. Okay, we have the aggregation or the new aggregation level. So now we have the second uh, solution, which is the dynamic filtering. So basically, we are getting rid of the all or nothing toggles. Okay, just getting rid of them. And we're introducing, introducing a new configuration, which would allow you to control exactly which metrics you'd like to see for each topic, group, or namespace. So you control exactly which metrics are exported. And it's going to be rule-based, um, like, like many uh, systems that you probably know. Rule-based means that it's in order and order counts. And it's going to be dynamic. Okay, the, um, So it allows you to change it, like uh, zoom in and zoom out dynamically. So what does it actually mean? So imagine you have um, all the metrics exported, right? Everything is exported and you have the different aggregation levels. So now you can have like a, 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 like a default um, rule. Let's call it the default, okay? And that says something like, I want to drop all topic level and below. Only remain with, uh, let's say the group level and the namespace level. So how do I do that? I say, okay, I want to select all the instruments, the metrics that start with Pulsar everything that has the attribute topic. And what I want to do, what I want to filter, is I want to drop everything, drop all equals true. Okay, that's the first rule. And then I want to override it, okay? Now I have only group and namespace, right? But what if I have an issue, okay, for a certain amount of topics? So let's say I have multiple topics that I'm interested in, okay? But, so I know there is an issue in a certain group. I can say, in, I'm adding another rule after it. It's called and and using that rule, I would say, okay, all the pulsar messaging topic uh, metric. I want to um, expose them all those metrics, but only for topic metric group called receipts US. And and the filter rule is I don't want everything, all the topic level metrics. No, I want only pulsar rate. That's the only thing I know which is making problems that I see in the group level, right? And then, boom, I can see it because it's dynamic. Okay, now let's say I know there is a certain topic that has like really bad rate. So what I can do is I can add another rule that says I can remove the, the rule from before, right? And I can decide um, to have, a, um, for, I can zoom into a single topic. So I can add another rule, BI data, call it. I can select all the instruments, pulsar underscore, uh, as you can see. And for the attribute, I would say only BI data topic. And for the filtering and say, okay, for those metrics, keep everything. I want to keep, so I, I'm getting all the, like the highest granularity. But maybe I don't want consumer and subscription level. So I can easily say on the filter instruments, drop only both our subscription and consumer. Okay, everything that starts with subscription and consumer. So if you have this aggregation level, you reduce the cardinality by the topic aggregation. And maybe you want, but you still want the fine grain control. Maybe some group is uh, showing pub problems. So you can do the filtering to zoom in and out dynamically. Okay, so that's, the, that's like the basic core of the solution. But as you can imagine, as I showed you before, from the developer point of view, in order to implement something that across the board aggressive, you would have to have a single metrics library, not just one. And so we have to select one, one single library to consolidate everything. If we are consolidating, maybe we can just take a look at what exists, right? So basically, um, we chose open telemetry in the PIP after a lot of consideration. I can tell you what we didn't choose. 
we didn't choose draw poiser metrics because they don't have support for attributes something so basic like it's only a name and a value micrometer was supposed to be like the standard we all hoped for but it didn't really caught on and it's only for the jvm pulsar has python and go runtimes <coughs> Prometheus library, like the Java client, it's not pluggable. It's only Prometheus. And it's not the most effective format for now. And it has severe performance issues when you use a lot of attributes, a lot of topics. And the community there wasn't that receptive. So why did we choose OpenTelemetry? First, I don't know if you know, but it's an emergency, emerging industry-wide standard. So many companies are working together on it. Not just a single company like in Micrometer. Many companies are working on it to make it a standard that all the industry would use. If you would read the specification and the, and the library, you would understand it's literally 10x than any other metrics library that exists in the ecosystem. Just for an example, you can override like third-party metrics like like you have libraries right that you're using in pulsar and um it exposes the metrics you can override that if you want using views you can say you know i'm changing the attributes you're recording to something different i'm changing the buckets you have too many okay you can even you can even change the, the histogram buckets of any metric using user config and open telemetry is not just about logs it, it, metrics it's also about logs and traces so they share context um and of course i think people would know it like it's e people would have easy to to use it because everybody would know it right and the maintainers are super super friendly and the library itself is very very elegant like if you know it like i do now um the internal architecture the design the specification it's basically brilliant engineering it's one other thing nice about it it supports delta not just cumulative so if you are exporting your metrics to let's say um, elasticsearch delta is the only way to go because you really can't um, use Elasticsearch and have rates because it simply doesn't have the notion of a single time series, at least for now. Not just Elasticsearch, but OpenSearch as well. It has a super efficient protocol for metrics called OTLP, much more than Prometheus. And the formats are pluggable. You can have, and currently it supports Prometheus and OTLP. Okay, so now we understand why open telemetry. Okay. What what else is going to change besides consolidating all the um, all the metric libraries libraries into one? Okay, so let's see. First, um, because of all that change, because of open telemetry, it has like semantic convention, and we want to use that chance. We want to make order in the domain prefix, so it's easy to isolate like a specific domain in the metrics. All the names are gonna change. Um, second is the histograms. So the histograms, um, because uh, Open Telemetry currently has, um, doesn't support histograms at a topic level because topics keep moving and it doesn't support like deleting. Uh, you would have to have it uh, on a broker or a namespace level, and and that's it. We can have it histograms at the topic level, but because Pulsar itself is multi-tenant by design, many topics are actually competing and using the same threads. Threads, um, actually, it's a lot of time confusing if you would have because you would think that a certain topic has problems, but actually, it's not. It's like it's something completely different. So, based, let's say on the on the on the stream native production experience, it seems to be okay that uh, decision. Um. Would have no more summaries because summaries is like a type that is 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 not aggregatable. Not aggregatable. We're switching to histograms. 
no no more rates you would still see them on the pulsar admin api on the json but no no more rates cumulative counters is the way to go um we're getting rid of the all or nothing toggles that we have like namespace topic level prometheus no prometheus producer consumer or not you can use the filter to control exactly what you want to see the histograms would be correctly exported the metrics will not get delta reset anymore um you would not lose data now Postal plugins authors would actually get an open telemetry interface to expose metrics. Like today, it's it's a uh, really problematic if you want to have your own metrics. But um, all the plugins that you're using would have to be updated, so they would use that that new open telemetry uh, metrics. Otherwise, you lose the metrics. Post of function authors would finally would be able to define all the types of metrics because they would get an open telemetry interface. So it's not only summary. Now all the metrics would be properly documented with a rule to force that. So where are we now? Um PIP uh, 264 was approved by the community it was a again it was a huge effort and thanks a lot for uh, the people at stream native that uh, helped me and the people in the community that reviewed it it was really helpful but it's approved from september 1st and um, started working on the prerequisite of adjusting open telemetry to be fit to run inside a low latency a server like pulsar so that's in progress you can track using the issue uh, I, I mentioned here now it's a very very large initiative so I, we hope it to be available in 2024 uh, so thank you for taking the time to listen 